Hello and welcome back to another guide for Lamplighters League. My name is Iken, I do guides for games and you are seeing the Ingrid guide, class guide into Ingrid. I will keep it short and concise as always. We're starting with Ingrid, what her base abilities are, which skills to unlock, then uh, go through the undrawn hand and a couple of gameplay to just round up the adventure. Let's start with Ingrid herself. She's a bruiser, a frontliner, that is an exceptionally strong character in the game if you play her correctly. Her, she excels at dealing damage and crowd controlling at the same time and she can break the action economy with her passive ability uh, which allows her to regain action points. Killer Instinct is the name of the game. In the beginning, uh, she can only trigger that two times per round. Later in the game, she can trigger it as often as she wants, making her a true chain killing machine. So what to watch out for when uh, playing Ingrid in skilling her? Generally, there are a couple of things that I value highly. She does have a great ability called Push Kick, which allows to push the target back two tiles, later even three tiles, uh, shreds armor on top of it and knocks down uh, the enemy. Enemies that are knocked into other enemies are also knocked down. The second enemy is then pushed further, which if he or they hit another wall, both of the enemies are actually knocked down. So keep that in mind when you're replacing or repositioning and you're trying to knock enemies down. You can knock as much as two enemies down with that. So that's ability number one that you you should be aware of when looking at her. The other one is clearly Killer Instinct. Uh, Killer Instinct 2 allows you to activate three times around Killer Instinct 3 even as often as you want. Great ability. The next ability that I value highly is Stick and Move, which is an ability that not only blinds the enemy, but at later point even uh, has the chance to knock down on a crit. And with an endgame in grid, you're critting around 60 to 70 percent of the time, allowing this to be two thirds of a chance to knock the enemy down. On top of it, you get a free movement action after you hit the enemy. So the play style here is use that in your last AP when you cannot kill an enemy, hit them, at least blind them, and then move into cover afterwards. So those are the main important abilities. She has a couple of others, as in becoming a little bit quicker, as in having the ability to basically blade storm, so hit around her uh, later twice in a row, or simply have a couple of passive abilities that give her speed and when she crits cooldown re reduces. So this here by the way I would highlight as well potentially as a third sweet spot you want that cooldown reduction because that allows you to push kick and uh, stick and move more often. So that is her core uh, tree with the focus points that you should uh, set in. Now let's look at the equipment that Ingrid excels in. Clearly that will change over time as you're playing through the game. But one equipment that I would highlight are the mechanical vampiresses. You can get uh, those uh, from Danny Belford relatively early in the game. Passive melee attacks gain a 33% chance to reduce the cooldowns by one. If you combine that with her ability to self-reduce cooldowns on a crit, that will oftentimes very much reduce the cooldown immediately. So I'm still using them very much in the end game. They, in my opinion, are better than any other um, action item for her uh, because she will benefit a lot from continuously having her um, abilities ready. For the talisman, I started with armor shredding just to make it a little bit better, then transitioned into more uh, crit um, and or um, other talismans that increase damage and later went into the skirmish talismans which is potentially the best for her where you get speed, weapon damage and crit chance just all around great. Um, as garments, I was running Vitality Gear 1 and th uh, 2 and later 3 and just very late in the game changed to Adamantine Lining, which is an all-around great um, uh, set of uh, armor that you what can also uh, get from Danny Belford down here. 
uh, reduces all of the elemental damage and gives her speed and armor, really everything that Ingrid needs. Now, in terms of undrawn hand, Ingrid can uh, work with a lot of uh, different cards in the undrawn hand. What I would suggest you to do is try to find ways to uh, further either improve her crowd control ability, um, her uh, chance to critically hit, or her ability uh, to uh, gain more AP. And really what I did is I did all three of them. One of the best non-rare uh, so common cards is the bull for her. Deals very moderate damage, but on level 5 knocks down even 6 tiles and uh, creates knockdown. I can tell you that I had situations where enemy were, enemies were lining up in a row and I could knock down as many as 3 enemies just with a bull ability. Ultra strong in terms of crowd control if you play it right and with only a 2 round cooldown and her own ability to reduce cooldowns it is almost always or it is de facto always up. Short of uh, the damage this is a great card. I am using Passage on her as well. That is one of the things that is good on many agents, but on Ingrid in particular. 7% uh, crit chance and on scoring a crit, cooldowns are reduced further by one. So whenever she scores a crit with her passive ability, you're reducing cooldowns by two. This plus her self cooldown reduction alone is potentially enough to just make her absolutely great um, and she will oftentimes have cooldowns ready and then as the third one that i can recommend is the great wind uh, upon becoming inspired assuming that you do have someone in the team that inspires you uh, you do have a 25 percent chance to generate one ap to a maximum of three ap with uh, the passive talents that you will get uh, later mm -hmm. in the, the trees, such been. as uh, the one from Danny Belfort, where um, crits will shred five armor, melee crits that is, or melee has a 10% chance to gain, uh, gain one AP. That will allow her to even further excel at what she does. One alternative item that you could use is the trauma battery instead of the Vembraces that I introduced that basically gives her another 25% chance to uh, generate one AP in melee uh, so that she can continue doing what she's doing. She's an overall powerhouse to be reckoned with and I absolutely like her. So let's see how she plays in the actual combat and what are a couple of tricks that you should know about. All right, let's take a look at Ingrid. We got ourselves into a troublesome situation. Uh, we first of all got buffed by Anna Sophie, getting us all the way up to 6 AP. And then Eddie did a full rampage in setting up most of the enemies. You can already see that, they are, that these are the perfect setups for Ingrid, but there are also three more enemies back here. So how are we going to go about all of these problems? So for starters, Ingrid uh, does have quite a bit of uh, movement thanks to her uh, skills and her setup. And she's going to use that in order to create even more AP for herself. Trauma Kit and uh, the Killer Instinct triggering right there. Uh, we are continuing by hitting the Void Dweller here. Trauma Battery still delivers the AP. And we're going to use stick and move in order to kill, uh, kill uh, trauma battery, the great wind uh, for the self buff, as well as uh, our um, killer instincts are triggering. And we're up to 10 AP. Holy smokes, but that is not all. Ingrid is not done yet, uh, ladies and gentlemen. She is gonna go in. It's done hits uh, yet another enemy trauma battery and a couple of other things trigger and we are continuing to just uh, mm, uh, <laughs> kill all of them we do have 11 um, AP at this point uh, we're going to use stick and move uh, to further Definitely. potentially trigger yeah. the great wind which we're doing killer instinct trauma battery and the great wind are triggering we're up to 14 AP at this point but we're not done. Stick and move um, is going to be the name of the game. Trauma battery, killer instinct gets us all the way up to 15. Um, and yet again, we're not done. Continuing the stick and move. Killer instinct, 
and the cooldown reduction just continues to allow us uh, to use stick and move as often as we want thankfully we're scoring crits all the time um, maybe even a little bit more than 70 percent i might have been conservative in my crit estimate with her and you can see that she has now cleaned better, up uh, not uh, less than eight enemies we're at 15. so let's say for a hypothetical these three here wouldn't be completely wetting their pants in which case uh, we are going to of course place them down um, and knock them down trauma battery uh, can trigger with every single one of these hits and we are then continuing uh, to hit them uh, with uh, stick and move you couldn't keep up the great wind can no longer trigger because we have already leached all of the three uh, ap out of it but Killer Instinct always triggers when we're hitting uh, someone. And you can see even by oh, herself, um, just the cooldown reduction and the damage is obnoxious. She is dealing quite a bit of uh, that cleaning up all this mess by herself. Another hit. Reactive Metallurgy and Killer Instinct. The reactive, me reactive Metallurgy is uh, the uh, skill out of the skill uh, tree. Uh, mm, now, you from one of our allies trauma battery triggers again and uh, finally after all of that we're using stick and move in order to kill and the last enemy that. keep in mind we just got up to 15 ap again so 6 ap went all the way up to 15 ap and she killed 11 enemies in the process granted eddie did a lot of the footwork but i just want you to appreciate what has happened because even without that uh, with her sheer um, self-generation of ap she could have gone in here and just push kicked uh, this guy into that guy this guy into that guy getting all four of them down another uh, stick and move here to blind and then move over here triple knock down um, another uh, another uh, stick and move over here to move back then push kick uh, in order to just crowd control one two three four five eight of them without them even having a chance to do anything ingrid in the end game with the right cards is an absolute force to be reckoned with and i would like to see in the comments down below any argument uh, that you make for any of the characters Don't that potentially it. could beat her uh, to the punch because like i said it's not just her ability to uh, uh, deal atrocious amounts of damage and continue with a lot of wow. ap but it is also her ability to simply uh, crowd control all of the enemies she's a bruiser she's a damage dealer she controls uh, the battlefield she has a lot of crowd control and uh, on top of that she can self-generate a lot of ap so that's essentially scoring in all four categories where you could score a very strong build i hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think in the comments down below and see you in the next episode bye bye